Inside Hilltopper Athletics is brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Here's your host, Lynn Ollum. Welcome to a volleyball edition of Inside Hilltopper Athletics. I'm Lynn Ollum, the Director of Athletics, and joined by West Liberty University head volleyball coach Riley Jarrett. Coach, thanks for joining us. Yes, thanks for having me. It's uh, It's been an an interesting and exciting season since we did our previous podcast, which yes. is right before that opening weekend. So let's quickly just sum up your thoughts and what has transpired here in the first third of the season or so. For sure, yeah. We've had a really great season thus far. Um, I mean, a few losses, but you know, only those two regional losses that we have. Um, the thing that I keep telling everyone is we just have a lot of weapons, right? We're really versatile offensively, really versatile defensively. Um, so we've been able to do a bunch of different lineups and we've been able to see different people step up, which has been promising to see. Um, and we've had some tough wins, you know? It's been a tough schedule for us. A few good wins on the road, a few good wins at home. Um, so definitely proud of how we've done thus far. Well, I always jokingly tell you, and I think your husband's more stressed than, than I am, that <laughs> yeah. we have a way of making some of these interesting. And of course, that's against quality competition, but uh -huh. a number of uh, gutting out five set wins. Yes. So where would you say your team's maturity is level at? If, if you're winning five set matches, mm -hmm. that's when you got to dig deep and figure yep. it out. So Yeah, and this is something I tell a lot of people that I talk to. My first full season as a head coach in 2021, we lost so many five set matches. Um, and I just think how far we've come, like you just said, maturity-wise, experience-wise, resilience-wise, it just shows how much you know we kind of put into that, the work off the court, to then that transpires then to on the court. Um, we've got a gritty group, um, and it's a big mix. You know, we have some upperclassmen, we have some underclassmen playing. I always tell them how resilient they are um, and how proud I am of them, because you know, in five-step match, it can go either way, right? You know, it's split, can go either way. So we've gotten some on the road, we've gotten some here. Um, so definitely, you know, a mature group, and I just think we really focus on one point at a time you know we always say one game at a time one day at a time so when you're going into that fifth set match it's really just one point at a time but yeah I know that Joel yeah gets really stressed out for him I feel like I've tried to keep my composure and my cool a lot more into you know my fourth season than I did maybe in my first one or two um, so I think that that helps the girls too yeah it, it's um, you had talked about playing different lineups yes um, battled some injuries early, yeah. so let's talk a little bit how you've navigated the, mm -hmm. um, those situations. Yeah, we've had we had two go down um, on September 5th when we had IUP here, and we got that you know win in five, which is a huge win for us. Um, and then we had another go down actually in warm up. So like I had to turn in a lineup literally 30 seconds um, before we started a game because one of my starters went down in warm ups. Um, so you know I'm always preaching to them it's the next woman up. Um, and we talk about that a lot. You know, it doesn't matter your role, doesn't matter if you're a starter, non-starter, if you're on the bench, you know, you're ready to go at any point. So I think that it's been great to see what we have been able to do just with those different lineups and with some people playing different positions. Um, and I just think it speaks to the depth we have, right? We have a lot of people that can do more than one thing. And I think that that makes it, you know, competitive in practice, then that translates to games. But yeah, it's been, you know, a year full of adversity and I'm really proud of how we've been able to respond to a lot of situations that we've been put in for sure. Little bit different dynamics in the MEC this year. Mm -hmm. um, Wheeling, which is pretty much, they've won the tournament every year. Yes. I think West Virginia State has won the regular season. Yes, in the, the number South, one yep. seed. Mm -hmm. uh, State's off to a fantastic yes, start. They, are. they had beaten Wheeling in, in mm -hmm. three sets. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't played State or Wheeling yet. Yep. Big win against Fairmont last week. So right now, unblemished in lake play, tied mm -hmm. at the or actually leading in yep. the north. Um, what has happened for the good? Tell us some parts of your game mm -hmm. that has gotten you off to a good start. Yeah, I definitely think, you know, we're a very aggressive serving team. I think that's something we're kind of known for here at West Liberty. Um, we love to get teams out of system, right? We love to cause chaos on the other side of the net. Um, we love to make them scramble, and that makes, you know, our blocking, our defensive jobs way easier. Um, and like I said, I think we have a lot of weapons. Offensively, you know, I really like to try and spread the ball around. It's not like we have, like, one, you know, big go-to hitter, right? We have a lot of different hitters getting a lot of different attempts, um, which is hard for to scout for, right? Because we're uh, mixing the ball around, um, we're getting different people involved, so I think that that helps. And I think we have a great backcourt. Um, I think our defense is the scrappiest in the MEC. Um, you know, we have the mindset, we don't want a ball hitting the ground. 
Um, so I love to see that pursue. Um, and I just think, you know, this year it's, it's been fun. You know, it's been fun to be on this winning streak. It's been fun to have the target on our back because we know everyone wants to beat us um, just with how we've kind of progressed over these last few years. Um, but yeah, it's exciting to see and we have some big games coming up. Um, but again, we focus on one game at a time. Um, that's something I think we've done a really good job with this year, not looking too far ahead, not looking too far in the past, really focusing on being more present in the moment. That's something I've really tried to preach to them. Okay, educate us here a little bit. For <laughs> the general fan out there that may enjoy the sport but really doesn't get into the the nuances of the game. Yeah. Explain getting somebody out of system. Yep, yeah, so I'm a big stats person, so I actually rank how we're serving. Um, so when I'm saying getting someone out of system, you know, what are they doing over on their side of the net with their first touch? Is their setter having to run super, super far off the net and can really only find, you know, maybe the outside pin, the right side pin? Um, you know, what are they being able to do with that second touch? You know, do they only have one hitting option, two hitting options, three hitting options? So that's what I mean by getting out of system when that setter on the other side of the net is really scrambling and not in target to be able to set all three pins. So I had kind of asked this question, but let's just get a little bit more specific. Mm -hmm. If you could identify one aspect of team play to this point, mm -hmm. what have you performed the best at? Mm -hmm. Where on our team position-wise or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You mentioned serving, anything yep. else? Yeah, I think our passing is really great. So that's our serve-receive patterns. Um, and we have you know a few that are back there for every single pattern. Um, so again, we stat how we're passing. Um, are we being in system, right? Because that's what the other team's trying to do, get us out of system. Um, so I think our passing game has been really, really strong. And that's the name of the game, serve and pass. And that's something we spend a lot of time talking about. If you win the serve and pass game, nine times out of 10, you're gonna beat the other team. So I would say our serve-receive, our passing has done a really nice job this year. Okay, knowing mm -hmm. that you're a perfectionist, <laughs> I tried to probably coach the same way and you're not going to mm -hmm. be satisfied. Yep. How can we get better? What yep. are areas that maybe we're not where you want us to be and, For sure. and we can see improvement? More? Yeah, I think that with a few injuries that we've had, um, our blocking is something that we really work on a lot. So like our blocking when we're at the net, our outsides, our middles, our right sides, just trying to get a little more touches, um, trying to slow the ball down a little bit. So I think blocking is something we're always preaching them to work on. Um, and then just being smart with our hitting options, right? Making sure we're taking care of the ball, you know, limiting our errors. I think our offense has done a nice job. I just think I would like to see us be a little more efficient with our overall team hitting percentage. Um, it's better than it was last year, and that's always the goal, right? Um, but those are kind of the big things that I think just still fine tuning. Not that there's super negatives about us, just something that we're always working on. Okay, tell us, what do we got coming up here? Mm -hmm in the near future. Tell us yep. what we're doing at home. I think you have an event planned yep. for one night to kind of mm -hmm. yeah. fill us in. Yeah, so tomorrow, so Friday, we head to Frostburg um, and they actually just went four with Wheeling. So that's a gym um, that we're going to tomorrow and we were down 0-2 last year there. Came back and did the reverse sweep beat them. Um, so that's a big game that we're going to tomorrow. Next week then we host Wheeling here on Tuesday and this is something we're gonna get out on social media too. We're giving away t-shirts to students that come. Um, so that's obviously a big game, big rivalry game. And then, then next Friday, Saturday, we have you know two opponents coming here. We play Davis and Elkins on Friday night. Um, and that's actually our dig pink game. So we do a little fundraiser to support breast cancer. Um, so the girls will be in like pink warm ups. We'll wear like pink socks, pink ribbons. And we're actually opening the track upstairs through the foundation for our close family and friends. So that's gonna be an exciting event for a lot of families that come in town just when we're playing two games since we have so many that from, are from far away. And then Saturday we host Wesleyan here um, at noon. So yeah, we're looking forward to you know going to Frostburg tomorrow, taking care of them, and then having three more home games next week. Well, all right, what's well, been an an exciting run so far. Thank Let's you. keep this thing going. As always, you're doing a great job. Hats off to the, to the young ladies and, and yes. what they're doing on the court. So that wraps up this uh, edition, volleyball edition of Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Thanks for joining in and uh, come out and catch a game. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Roger Wiley. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration.